In this video, I'm going to be 3D printing Riptide from Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson is probably my all-time favorite book series, so I thought it might be a fun idea to create his sword in honor of the new show. I am a 3D artist, and I have spent the last two years learning the 3D program Blender. It is 100% free, and I highly recommend looking into it for 3D animation or CGI. To start off this project, I looked into some images of the sword. So to start, I found this one. I 3D modeled everything, which took me about an hour and a half, and then I sent it to my printer to let it print overnight. When the print pieces came out, they looked beautiful, and that's when I realized the image I found online was from the movie. So then I just threw the pieces behind my back. Now you might be wondering, what's so wrong about the movies? To someone who's read the book, it was kind of a sad moment. I, it was sad. I decided to design my own. So I decided to search for some more references of the one from the show. And after searching for like five hours, I couldn't find anything except for a few blurry clips from the trailer. I will say though that the poster came in really handy for 3D modeling. I'm so glad I had that. So to start off, I decided to draw my own design. Drawing can be time consuming, but if you know how to do it correctly, it can save a whole lot of time modeling later. For this design, I went for a sword and the handle was sort of like a trident, which I really liked. I'm using a lot of Greek swords and some images from the Percy Jackson graphic novels and then of course the poster. Once I'm done drawing, I can begin modeling. I use Blender for this project because it's just what I love. You can also use Tinkercad. How I 3D model is I usually break it into smaller shapes and then refine those shapes as I go. I also like to use a subdivision surface modifier to add an extra level of detail. A subsurface modifier just increases the polygon count and kind of smooths out the mesh. A regular FDM printer is like a hot glue gun. It basically goes around something, brings itself up or the bed goes down, and it does another layer. And it does this until the print is done. I tried actually mimicking this with an actual hot glue gun, and I decided to 3D print a Benchy. For some reason I thought it would work, but um... Here's a time lapse of me doing that. So yeah, it pretty much just turned into a blob. But this brings me to a good point. Why don't 3D printers just blob up? Well, the answer comes in two different parts. Different material, smaller nozzle. What I mean by different material is the hot glue gun's using a plastic that takes a very long time to dry. So therefore, when you try and add another layer, it just kind of melts along the side and doesn't look good. And what I mean by smaller nozzle, the 3D printing nozzle is way smaller than the hot glue guns, meaning that it takes more time to print than the hot glue gun, but the results are way better. I actually made another Benchy, but not with a hot glue gun, this time with a 3D pen, which has different material and a smaller nozzle, which turned out a lot better than the hot glue gun version, but still wasn't quite a Benchy. I then 3D printed a Benchy on my Creality K1 Max, took 16 minutes, which is way shorter than all the other ones, and it came out so beautifully. But now that that's done, we can finally get back to do 3D printing.
early the next morning, I basically took the 3D prints off and just immediately started sanding. Even though you can't see the layer lines now, once the paint is on, it's going to show so much. Which leads me to the next thing, paint. A gold paint, a clear coat, and a black and white primer that's also a paint and other things. I also got wood filler and a metal rod to go on the inside of the sword. After sanding for like the eternity of all time, That was the 3D printing montage part one. And then it broke. Yeah, it broke. And the reason is because I was using hot glue. And I know that hot glue isn't very strong. Either way, there's a lot of stronger glues and you can even weld 3D prints together with a soldering iron. I just went for some really strong super glue and that pretty much held it together. The primer I'm using for all of it is a black primer and paint, and it didn't really work as well as I had hoped. Since the primer was also a paint, it didn't fill in all the cracks. It took me about 10 layers just of priming and sanding, and that was just really terrible. So for my next project, I'm going to just use regular primer. There was a crack in the model of where the piece is connected, and since I was just kind of over sanding, I decided to cover it with a piece of cardboard that I painted to look like leather. I honestly really liked that I did this. I wasn't planning on it, but it just, it adds a lot, and I'm really happy with it. So after gluing that on, I painted the whole thing gold. I was using a Rust-Oleum gold paint that came out pretty reflective. I kind of wish it was more reflective. Either way, it turned out really nice. After the sword was painted gold, it looked brand new. Sometimes that's just not what you want. So I decided to weather it with some watered down brown paint and then wiped it down with a paper towel. And this kind of showed that it had been used. After about 50 hours of work, this is the end result. I'm incredibly proud of this. It's very reflective, as you can see. I love this thing, it, it came out gorgeously. I, I did some weathering on it, like I showed before, and you can just see how reflective this is. It's not too reflective, but it's, 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 it's cool. I, I love it. This 
Yeah, gosh. Um, Urgh, I'm such a monster and I'm gonna eat you, you half blood. Oh my gosh. Ah, Riptide! Uh, this is a pen. Huh? No, it's not Riptide, it's just a pen. Da! 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 Uh, yeah! Uh, uh, gotta check on the 3D print! I got it, it's done! Ah! Uh, yeah! Ah! Ah! Yeah! Uh, yeah! Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed making the sword and I can't wait to do more projects in the future. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. I have a very cool video coming up once we reach 100,000 subscribers, so please help that happen. And I want to say a big thank you to the people who are subscribed. Your support means the world to me and I cannot thank you enough. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.